gonna drink or do anything now, which is fine. The fucking bomb just went off. What the fuck? What, um... <laughs> what the fuck are we doing here? That's why you don't come to East Boston for a podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the... People of fucking Boston, shout out people of Boston. Mark the con, Harvard Yard. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, the people who do this podcast, whoever's listening, they're good what? shit, they're good shit. We're here with the, the people, people of Boston, Boston. We love they're them. beauties, we're chilling. All right, Joe, welcome back to the People of Austin podcast. We're not in our, we're not in my room anymore. It's beautiful outside. It's, we're enjoying the weather. It's beautiful outside. We had to take it outside today because, like you said, we're enjoying the weather. Mm-hmm. And episode twenty, we had a, we have a guest interview, and That's this right. is this is not a normal guest, right? Nope. This is not a nobody. Uh huh. Uh, we had Tommy Garino, and I got his name wrong a couple times. You'll hear in a bit, but Fix his name's it. Tommy Garino. And uh, if you have TikTok, if you have Instagram, if you're on social media, you know who he is. Right. Um, he's got 1.2 million followers on TikTok. He has uh, 88,000 followers on uh, Instagram, and he's the Boston guy. That's like, right. That's how he's known. If you put Boston guy in Google, he will pop up, that's which right. is crazy. Like, and he's done, I think he's said, he, I mean, he's only been doing this for so long, like a year or two. Um, and he's been able to get a lot of attention. He told us um, some cool stories that he's been able to like be a part of because of his fame on That's social right. media. Yep. We also asked him some questions um, about his family because you know he's if you know his videos he does like a lot of his like uncle the weird uncle right. videos. Uncle Dino. Yeah, Uncle Dino. That's so right. like we asked him like you know who's your craziest family member and a re- he gave us a real life story about his uncle that was like hilarious. Uh, he's a hockey player and if That's you right. know his videos as well. He love he like always like makes fun of hockey players or does something with hockey. He also hits the in those videos when he's talking about hockey. He also hits the nail on the head in terms of how those guys talk. Yeah, yeah. And so it was no surprise to find out he did play hockey. Yeah, he played hockey. He told us like what it was like playing hockey. He also told us about a fight he got into on the ice. That's right. So that was fun to hear. Yep. Um, and he told us his his basically wrap up of the seventy five hard challenge. What it was like for him because if you follow him also you would see he he was did the seventy five hard challenge which is for people that don't know it's it's crazy oh it's tough this, this challenge it's hard it's it's hard it's definitely hard <laughs> so what you have to do in the seventy five hard challenge is you have to read ten pages a day yep. of a book drink a gallon of water a day you have to do two workouts one of them has to be outside two forty five minute workouts. And then you also have to, what is it? You have to stick to a diet, no cheat meals, and no alcohol. Mm-hmm. So he gave us an inside scoop of what that was like for him and what his like, what his final, I guess, results were with that. What else, I mean, what else did he talk to us about? He also talked about, is he a simp? We talked about his yes. girlfriend. We all know the video of his girlfriend giving him the facial, putting like the rubber, like it wasn't rubber, but the gloves on his yeah, hand, the gloves are. on his feet. And the, the eye mask. Yeah. And we asked him if he was a simp or not. So yeah. stay tuned to find out that answer. Yeah. Because um, he's a tough guy. Yeah. He's like a man's man, big guy. Blue collar. He Blue kept collar. he kept referring to. Um, yeah. So so we asked him, are you simple? simp? We'll have to see. That's right. So we also talked to him after, you know, the simp situation. We also <laughs> talked to him about um, his favorite drink. Yeah. So you're going to hear a lot of different things thrown in there. Um, but I do think that we did get a good answer for his favorite drinks. Yeah. Um, or favorite drink. Well, he at least explained like his kind of like everyone goes through phases with yep. drinks. I do. Um, and whether it be the weather or just like whatever's going on, you kind of like you have your one drink, but then they switch to another one. Yeah. Drink. And he explained like his like kind of transition over time as to like what his drinks have been and what it is now. That's right. So we also found out what he used to drink in high school. Yeah. It's a lot different for from what he's into right now. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, and so coming up too, we got we got an inside scoop on some exciting stuff. Uh, this is already out there, but he's you know working on this YouTube channel um, with Dunkin' Donuts. I think I don't know if the title of the channel is called Boston Cream. It's called the yeah Boston Cream is like is like these this like skit series that he's doing. Right. And um, yeah, the first one was at Dunkin' Donuts, um, where there was like your, you have your typical Boston people. You have a yuppie. Yep. You have your locals. You have the guy that likes perks. Like you get your kind of bums. Yep. You got everyone in like a, like to kind of like uh, stereotype Boston. You got all of them there at the table at a Dunkin'. That's and right. And the next skit was at something like outside TD Garden scalping tickets. And he tells us like where this uh, these ideas came from, what, like what he sees in the future. So it's really cool. Yes, and he also alluded to what's going on in his life and what's coming up next for him, Matt. Yeah, yeah. So he we asked him like, what's next for you? Like you you already kind of so big on social media. What's the next step? Mm-hmm. And he, he I mean, I'm not gonna 
like jump on his parade, but he told us. He told us what next steps are, and they seem pretty big. And I was actually really surprised to hear how much stuff he has planned coming up. He said, it all sounds interesting, and he's really diving. He told us he's putting like dipping his toe in every different wa like body of water he can. Outside of the interview, too, I feel like we should let our listeners know. Very down to earth guy. Very cool. Very easy to talk to off camera. Yeah. Um, he's a, a man's man, as he said, a gentleman's yeah. gentleman. His persona on like social media is like the in your face loud guy. Yeah. You know, and that's what makes him funny. I think, and that's what makes his videos funny. But when it, and so when I first met him, I was like, oh my god, is he gonna be like really loud <laughs> and like kind of overpowering? And he was like really quiet and like yeah. reserved. Yes. Which was like a complete turnaround from his persona, and even touched on it. He's like, I'm just, I'm not like the persona that I am. It's a character it's, that he plays. It's like a character, yeah. Right. So you know. To see him and have this interview with him at like with Tommy and not like you know the Boston guy right. that he is on TikTok was really cool and I think it gives him some good like almost like good press on who he really is outside of like what you see on TikTok and that's right and Instagram and YouTube. So without further ado, I think we just hop into it. We're gonna get into the interview with Tommy Guarino. Let's do it. All right, so we got our second guest now on the People of Boston podcast. Uh, who is Tommy? Now, tell me if I'm saying this right. Is it Gerino? No. Gerano? Can do a couple more guesses. Uh, Garino. 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 Tommy Garino. Garino. I've heard Guarino. I've heard Garano. I've heard it all. So, Did you ever know. get Tommy Guido as like an insult? No, not yet. <laughs> I'm surprised no one came up with that one yet. Now I'm going to get a bunch of fucking comments. I was like, not Tommy Guido. I don't even think that's an insult. I love Jersey Shore, so. There you go. I'm yeah. a big Jersey Shore guy. If you embrace the Guido as an Italian, then you're good. Yeah, you got you to gotta be all in or all out. You, know? yeah. you can't be one foot in the pool, one foot out. So, yeah. Yeah, it's good to be here, though. Yeah, no. Beautiful East Boston. Boston, a tall ship. Again, I apologize for the parking situation. We know the fucking Boston parking sucks as it is, so yeah. we don't get a ticket, but I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having no, me. No, it's great, and thank you. Um, we're really, we've, we've been looking forward to this, and we've loved your videos. I, I mean, I before we it. even started the podcast, my girlfriend's a big fan as well, um, and we just think you're hilarious. That's why we thought, why not talk to you? Why not, right? You're big East Boston. You live in East Boston, right? I live in East Boston, so we are currently in Maverick, which is a section of East Boston. I live in Orient Heights. Don't want to give out my address, but yeah. somewhere in Orient Heights, I've been there forever. Like I, I told you off camera, my grandmother bought the triple decker I still live in back in the 80s. Uh, obviously worth a shit ton of money now. Oh yeah. Great location. It's right on the water actually, which is awesome. But yeah, man, it's been great. I'm 22, still do live at home, but nice. looking to move out soon because uh, I've been lucky enough to turn this into a full-time business. Yeah, so it's I'm crazy. making some good money now, which is great. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Where would you move if you I mean, if you could have your choice? Let's say money's not even an option. If you yeah. can move anywhere in Boston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Boston, I mean, I like Seaport. Seaport's oh, nice. Beautiful. I like East Boston too, but there's really not too many nice parts of East Boston. I like where we're at right now. Yeah. My section, Orient Heights, is pretty nice, but I think Seaport's obviously up and coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the North End, the old rustic vibe, but I would have to say sea, Seaport or... Um, I like Back Bay too. Back Bay is beautiful. Back Bay is nice. But yeah. that's a really expensive too. Very I mean, expensive. If money's not an option, it's beautiful, but. <laughs> Gonna get a couple more sponsorships before <laughs> yeah. that happens. <laughs> yeah. I do wanna travel a lot though, because people always ask me, like, oh, do you wanna stay in Boston? What do you wanna do? And I'm like, yeah. you know, right now my business is in Boston. You know, uh -huh. Everyone calls me, like, oh, quote unquote, the Boston guy. So yeah, yeah. Why would the Boston guy leave the city, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I love the city. You know, I'm a diehard sports fan here. I've been here my whole life, so there's no reason for me to get out of here. So, I plan to stay here, definitely. Now, you've been here your whole life. Do you have a story growing up? Like I'm from Connecticut, mm -hmm. so I don't have. I can maybe think of a story that screams Connecticut, but nobody cares, right? Mm -hmm. Boston's great. You've lived here your whole life. Do you have a story of like growing up that just like screams Boston? Like maybe going to a game as a kid or like saw something crazy? Yeah, I mean my, my house every day, daily is another <laughs> fucking story. And, uh, <laughs> I live in a, I live in a big Italian Bostonian family in East yeah. Boston, so you know it's either my mother screaming at my father. I've gotten clickers thrown <laughs> at my head before. <laughs> a clicker is a TV remote if you don't know what that is. I was just gonna say that. Um, we got little girls running across the screen right now. Yeah, there's apparently a, some kind yeah, of some child kid fashion show. thing today. Uh, but anyway, let's <laughs> go topic. Uh, I mean, this is like kind of, I don't want to say doc humor, but like, because I'm just like desensitized because my family's fucking nuts. So I've seen like <laughs> yeah. so much shit. Yeah. But like, I remember I was coming home from hockey practice. Uh, <laughs> Play, I, I skated at the East Boston rink and you can pretty much throw a rock and hit my house from the rink That's how close it is nice, and um, I was coming home for practice. I think I was like 16 I just got my license and so driving home <laughs> and I'm pulling down my street. I see 
cop cars, ambulances. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, the first thought in my head, I'm like, my, my grandmother's fucking sick or something. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So I'm scared. I pop the car, I get in the house, and there's, like, fucking blood everywhere. I'm like, what Jesus. the fuck just happened? <laughs> and apparently, I, I, I can't make this up. I'm a, I run I some, because we my grandmother's on the first floor. Okay. Me and my parents are on the second floor, and then we have a family front of the third floor. Okay. So I ran to the second floor. All the cops are on the first floor. I'm like, Ma, what the fuck happened? Like, is, is someone dead? <laughs> yeah. Pretty yeah. Much. yeah. And she was like, she was like, oh, yeah, your father and your uncle just fought because uh, your uncle, <laughs> your, your uncle took the last piece of. It was like, it was like pasta, or like some type of food. I'm Ella. It's not fucking rocket science. Just make sure the anti pasta the men of God's ready when I get home. It's not rocket science. So they got into a legit fist fight because my <laughs> uncle took the last food, but because he took the last piece of food, they argued about a situation that happened years ago. Yeah. And it turned into like my uncle owed my father five hundred dollars from like four years ago. Yeah. And my father just sucker punched him, and then it turned into like an assault and battery thing. But maybe no, maybe not put the whole thing in there. But yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's fine. It's it's all resolved now. But we all have that fucking crazy uncle. I know we kind of talked about it, but yeah. dude, my house is a fucking madhouse, and that's like the first thing that comes off the top of my head because I vividly remember that core memory because when I heard it I was like I'm like I don't know if this was a laugh or cry right yeah, now, yeah. my dad was fine it was nothing crazy they resolved it they're good now nah, so that's we cool. can joke it's about brotherly it brotherly love I mean it's literally the same shit that me and my brother would do growing up right. what's up it is name's Jake uh, I'm a 21 year old freshman uh, I ripped some junior B down in Alberta that's why uh, I love the Puck squad here so I'm ripping it up actually starting this year top recruit so you're a huge Boston sports fan, as yes, you alluded to. Yes. You love the Bruins. Yes. Um, is, Bruins are obviously your team. Hundred percent. Yeah. All right, sweet. Uh, and, and did you play hockey growing up? I did. I played my whole life. I actually played one year at UMass Boston, which was oh cool. no shit. I uh, yeah. So quick bio on my hockey career. I played <laughs> just East Boston hockey, uh, youth hockey my whole life, and then after East Boston youth hockey, I played at East Boston High School, and then after that, we had a good little run. I played with all my close friends, which was nice. great. And then I made a decision to either go to college or play juniors because, like, you have to play juniors usually to play college hockey. Yeah, yeah. And I chose to go to college because I was like, you know, I'm good at hockey. I love it, but I, I just want to kind of get my life going at this point. Yeah. Um, and you don't, I mean, and you, a lot of kids fall into the juniors trap. Yeah. Where they're like 25 and a freshman. That's what I was going to say. Five that's, years of juniors. That's exactly what I was going to say. You know? Not that it's anything wrong with it if you're really good at hockey and like it. Right. But if you're 26 years old and you're the freshman. Right. And then, you know, it's, I remember those guys on my floor. Like, it yeah. Kind of, and, and if it's your true passion, then so be it but it's like it, you're gonna be a 23 year old freshman to play d3 at salve regina you know yeah. it's like it's cool but like whatever but yeah anyway so i i ended up not doing that i went to umass lowell for a semester a lot okay. of people don't know that um i met another buddy of mine who's also tiktok famous now jake polino he does the air force ones i don't know if you've ever seen him die air force ones but oh he's yeah huge. i think i've seen someone so we know. met I don't want to get too off topic, but we met just like we were random roommates at UMass Lowell. No shit. And then we just, he lives in Winthrop, so it's right next to me. Yeah, yeah. So we just, we just randomly got big on TikTok at the same time, so we're yeah. even closer now. But anyway, ended up transferring to UMass Boston my second semester of my freshman year, so 2019. And then the fall semester of my sophomore year, I knew the captain of the hockey team and they were just looking for a backup goalie. I'm yeah. a goalie. Nice. So that explains a lot because the goalies <laughs> are the weird ones. Yeah. Uh, and then he just, he was like, hey, we need like an extra goalie. Like if you want to try out, try out. And I'm yeah. like, all right, whatever haven't skated in months but I hopped on the ice and I didn't do bad I mean the kids were fucking nasty like I, there was kids from like Saskatchewan Canada shooting on me I couldn't even see the puck yeah. but like I'm just like coming all the way out of the net like hoping it hits me because yeah. especially in college hockey the goalies are big like I'm five nine and a half five ten on a sunny day so yeah, it's like yeah. the goal is like six three six four that I'm like, competing against but I eventually was like a big locker room guy the guys liked me I was a good backup I was a good teammate and yeah. they, they let me well they didn't let me the coach said I was uh, good enough to be on the team there so I go. made the team I played one year at UMass Boston got to know the guys and the rest was history I kind of hung them up after, hung them up after that but yeah. now I'm just like a barely guy I play pickup here and there so there you go. it's been good so that's kind of my hockey career encapsulated nice. pretty much do you ever get any fights in like like, at, so at goalies don't really usually fight. Yeah. But uh, no, actually, this is another funny story. Uh, my senior year, you uh, my senior year at East Boston High, uh, I was the goalie. My team was horrible. We lost all of our guys after my junior year. Uh -huh. So all of my good friends were good at hockey, but they were a year above me. Mm -hmm. So when they graduated, I was kind of hung out to dry my senior year. My yeah. team was like had kids that couldn't even skate on the team. Yeah, yeah. So I get like six, yeah, I get like sixty shots a game, and you know it was good practice, but it was like my senior year it was the last hurrah, but we had no chance to win anything. Yeah. So I remember like my buddy Marty, who's was was he was good. He's one of our better players. He got he quit because the team was so bad. Yeah. And then my other buddy quit. So it was me and the 
like a bunch of kids who couldn't skate. I mean, <laughs> granted, they all tried, and I loved the guys, but it yeah. just wasn't a good team. Yeah. So my 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 game before senior night, because everyone has the senior night, you know, the send off yep. to college or whatever. Parents on the ice. Stuff yes. Like so the game before that. Uh, we were playing a team, the worst team in the league, and we were tied with them in the third period. And I remember I was standing on my head. I was playing a great game, but I was so pissed because oh. we should have been killing the team. Yeah, yeah. I tie the puck up, kids digging on me, and I just, like, attack this kid. <laughs> like, I, I blew a gasket. I don't yeah. remember what happened. I attacked the kid. They threw me out. I'm the goalie. We, don't, we didn't have a backup. That's how bad we were. They threw me out. We forfeited the game. They suspended me. Oh, I never Jesus got a scene in it. Oh, I played hockey. I played hockey for... 20 years of my life oh no at that time 18 years of my life and yeah. I didn't get a fucking senior night Jesus Christ so, dude Tommy Garino never got a senior night so maybe we should arrange aren't that aren't you not supposed to I, I'm, I like hockey but mm -hmm. I'm not, I never played I don't really know all the rules but I thought you're not supposed to like do that to the goalie like if he's covering up yeah like you can like dig a little bit to see like, if the puck's loose like technically oh, you can okay. put it in so it's like you know one second two second okay but this kid was like hacking at my glove and I was, I was already pissed off and <laughs> you know like, I I, your team sucks oh yeah exactly <laughs> and, I, and I have like you know that Italian blood in me I'm like, you know, I snapped. And that See was red, it. yeah. And I just saw red, and I fucking, I, I attacked this kid. Goalie's not supposed to fight. You're not supposed to fight at all in high school or college yeah, hockey. Okay. So I decided to attack this kid. They threw me out. No one got hurt. Like, it was harmless. We had yeah. equipment on, but... Yeah, I got suspended. I didn't have this fucking senior night, Damn, so I kind of tapped, capped off my uh, high school career there. But you know, at least you went out with a bang. Exactly, and I got to play at UMass Boston, so yeah. it, it kind of worked out. It was good. That's good. Welcome to day sixteen of my seventy-five hard challenge. Let's fucking do it. Following your TikToks, you recently finished the seventy-five hard challenge. Is yes, that right? Yes, I did. I did. How, how was that? Because I've seen so many people yeah. do this and talk about it, and I'm yeah. like, there's no way I could do it. How did I, it go? I actually meant to. Uh, I, I still got to do like a wrap-up video on my TikTok because yeah. everyone's asked like, what happened? Like, blah blah blah. And it went good. I mean, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Oh, I believe that's it. what made it so much more rewarding after finishing. And you know, the first, the first few weeks of it were very hard. And but that's when I made the most progress, which is weird. Mm -hmm. I remember I lost like, I, I lost like 15 pounds in a month, Jesus maybe a little less Christ. than a month. Yeah, that's a lot. Which is a lot because I, I mean, I'm still, I still want to lose more weight. Like, I, over the last few years, I've just put on weight. Just developing bad habits but yeah. you know I, I lost a good amount of weight and then it got like just w it, at like day 30 it got like really fucking hard and yeah I just remember like I was going so hard that like I was so depleted and I couldn't get a lot of, out of my workouts and it, I just wasn't enjoying it so yeah. I was like I either gotta tone it back or I'm gonna quit so yeah, it was like the stress of it too like you're like it's it's yeah starting to add up stress like, time management yeah. like two workouts a day you have to read 10 pages a day you have to drink a gallon of water a day no alcohol no cheat meals yeah. so the way I went about it was after like day 30 I kept it going I still did my two workouts every day but I toned everything back a little bit I was eating a little more balanced but I always stayed in a caloric deficit which nice. you know I was supposed to be taking in like I think it was like 2,800 to maintain my weight. So uh -huh. I took in like 2,500 a day or 2,600. Nice. So it was a good balance. I think I could have made a lot more progress if I was more prepared for the whole challenge because I kind of just said fuck it and dove into it. Yeah, yeah. But all in all, like I'm so happy I did it because I feel like I've developed a good routine and habits where I can just like turn a light switch on and like, you know, get right back into it. Would you do it again? Like if you... If, like, I do want to do it again. You I want definitely want to do it again because I feel like... I got a lot out of it, but I feel like I didn't get as much as I thought I would out of it. Um, I definitely lost weight, I think, altogether. Like, I said in the first 30 days, I lost, like, 15 pounds. Yeah, it's huge. But in the 75 days, I think I lost... 25 so nice. like i only lost 10 pounds over the last because like, you had to get balanced out at the right, end there you right. had to kind of like and, and that's fine you know yeah. I'm, I'm still happy i lost the weight but oh, i still huge. have a lot more work to do yeah uh but i definitely do want to do it again maybe like i need a little break yeah, like, you yeah. Know, down the line a little bit definitely want to do it again give another shot that's cool but it was tough dude it was uh it was a very it's mental it's all yeah. mental waking up at 7, 8 a.m. every day to get your first workout in outside. Yeah. That's another thing. Your first workout one is, has to be outside. Yeah, or one of them has to be outside, yeah. So I would usually just go on like a 45-minute walk. Nice. And then at night I would get a lift in. Nice. Uh, lift weight, so. It was good, though. It was a great, it was a good experience, but tough. Now you said you, like, I don't know if maybe you learned this during the process or you knew it before, but what's your biggest vice? And this is something we're also going to ask people, like, on the streets, but what's your biggest vice that you have, you think? So... In terms of making me like want to quit or like just in general? Like just in general, maybe like something that you 
maybe it's like like you said like time manager is a big thing like maybe that's your biggest vice or maybe something i don't know maybe it's not like i love food bro you, <laughs> the italian I'm not gonna lie. The italian, love food, bro. The italian I, family oh dude ever since i ever since i was a baby my nana was force feeding me pasta down my throat so what the fuck <laughs> yeah. dude i was the fattest little kid like i'm still a big boy but like growing up like i was the chubbiest little kid yeah and uh you know i played sports my whole life so kind of balanced out there you go yeah uh, but now when you're retired from sports it's <laughs> yeah. like uh, all right now you gotta balance out a little more but yeah dude i fucking love food i love i love eating out and like that's the biggest vice yeah. i would say like that's the main thing that kind of slows my progress or has slowed my progress in the past sure um but it's just it's just salty or salty or sweet are you going for <sighs> Like the savory or the uh I love chocolate. I chocolate. love chocolatey shit. <laughs> but I also love cheese. Meat and sh- meat bread and cheese. Oh, Pizza yeah. calzones. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Fuck me up. Fries. <laughs> bacon cheese fries. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Nick's place in Winthrop. Bomb. They always hook me up when I'm there because I, I was a I was a top tier customer there the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> but they're great people. I mean, dude, food's awesome. You gotta eat your food, you know, but you gotta eat it balanced. You gotta balance it out. Yeah, so yeah. that's something I learned over the last 75 days too. Definitely. You know? To eat in a caloric deficit, you have to yeah. like really pay attention to it dude it's and tough like, it's it's an every everyday thing and it's all it really all comes down to mental mental toughness it's really what it comes down to and yeah. i think that's the main the main like value i gained from the 75 hot challenge definitely strengthening that awesome how about and, you do you have advice before we move on uh yeah i mean i'm sure i should i got nah, like, I, sure I, I got something i, I, I love nicotine okay so okay. nicotine's probably one of my See, i had that <laughs> issue in high school uh, yeah. college a little bit well, so is it true and i've heard this about hockey players but i play lacrosse mm-hmm. And a lot of them played hockey. Yep. Is it true that hockey players would put dip in between their toes <laughs> and then get out on the ice? I don't know. That was a myth. I mean, I, I never, I never saw any guys doing it. I heard no. like the Russian players would do it. Yeah, they'd like, cut a little a slit a in their slit. toe. Yeah, so get in their bloodstream. And put the dip in. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've I've heard of some crazy people doing it. I've never seen it happen. I've yeah. never done it. But um, <laughs> I was definitely a big. Uh, Grizzly went to green pouches guy. Oh yeah, you know, never long cut, always pouches. Nice, uh, but I, I got away from that a while ago. I don't do that anymore. Luckily, how come? Is it just? I just don't. I mean, like I don't have the urge to do it anymore. Yeah, just. Like, drop I remember off. legit, like I'd be in my college dorm freshman year, and I'd be playing shell NHL, and uh. Just I, I'd pack like two pouches, <laughs> another two pouches the next hour. And, yeah, have a couple just, beers. Like, I don't know. It was, yeah, a couple beers. Like it was just. <laughs> It was just a routine, you yeah, know, and that yeah. just ties into everything else. It's like breaking those bad habits. And, yeah. You know, it is what it is. People do it, like, whatever, but yeah. I was just like, oh, I don't need this anymore, so. All right, today I got another Target run with me and my girlfriend, and she needs business today, baby. It's showtime. Picked okay. a perfect day to come out here. I know, dude. It's, it's like, so, it, there's not, I was I was kind of nervous because there's always, like, there's sometimes there's a lot of wind over here, so I was like, oh, am I going to fuck them and give them, like, too, <laughs> many wind for the, too much wind for the yeah. mic? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad it, it, we uh, made out good today. Um, next question we got for you is yeah. about your girlfriend. Yeah, I was waiting for this one. Yeah. <laughs> she was excited. She was excited for me to answer this one. <laughs> because I see a lot of your videos of like yeah, you going yeah. to Target uh-huh. and kind of putting up with her shopping yep. around. Yep. And then also Megan sent me one from her TikTok, which was her giving you a facial. <laughs> and you had the cream all over your oh, face. Buddy, I have my boy sending me that too. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm a big self-care guy, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I swear to God, I'm a big self-care guy. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt No, you no, it's all right. So, um, and you're a guy's guy. Yeah. You're like a man's man yeah, right? call a guy. yeah definitely so i mean you're doing a facial like uh-huh. do would you and i saw you comment on it even I, I look like a simp in this do you think you're a simp for your girl or is it kind of like you uh, I'm, a, I'm a big simp <laughs> i'll admit that listen I'm, I'm a guy's guy i'm a man's man i'm a blue I, all my content is like catered to the blue donkeys yeah blue guys yeah definitely but listen i love self-care i take bubble baths i do face masks sometimes <laughs> nice. and i i don't i'm not shy of it honestly and Listen, uh, she's a great girl. She, if I if she wasn't with me, honestly, she's giving me so much fucking support. I'd be an asshole to say, oh, I'm a fucking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big, like, tough guy. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't care about her. Like, yeah. no, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, so, yes, Tom Magarino <laughs> is also a sin. So, I'll, I'll put that out there. But uh, um, No, it's cool. Yeah, no, it is what it is, dude. Like, it's, that, if I was, now, if I was 18 and you asked me that, yeah. I'd be like, oh, bro, fuck that. Yeah. And I was just, like, doing that, like, just to impress her. But, like, <laughs> nah, dude, I'm honestly a big, like, I, I'm big into, like, self-care, skincare stuff. What else do you do, like, in, in your routine um that maybe people wouldn't know yeah that's a good question uh fuck just put me on the spot <laughs> i know I no because i do i'm, I'm kind of weird honestly i used to go to the movies by myself in high school oh yeah is that that's kind of odd just huh? alone time yeah I, i'm a big big 
into alone time. Nice. Lo- I'm, I'm kind of a loner, honestly, because I told you, I'm a very, like, I like to go out and enjoy myself, but uh-huh. I love to just chill. Like, yeah, I love definitely. to just be alone and not be bothered by people. So, yeah, in high school, I used to go to the movies by myself. I don't do that anymore because, like, all the movie theaters are gone now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, dude, I love watching movies. I love chilling. Um, do you I'm meditate? a big golfer. Golf, big golf nice. guy. I love golf, and I just got into it last summer. I didn't hit my first course until last summer. Okay. Um, but I'm gradually getting better. I can keep up now. I'm like a double bogey guy. Nice, nice. But uh, it's, uh, that, it's a That's where I am too. I've been playing since like eighth grade. Okay. And I'm still a double bogey really? guy. Really? I just, I just <laughs> decided I think I'm just going to stay right there yeah. at double bogey. I didn't I didn't start. Uh, I've always hit the driving range growing up. But yeah. I, I was always hesitant to get into it because it just looks boring from the outside. I'm like, this isn't fun. Yeah. And then you actually start getting a little better. And you're like, you get oh, some this buddies. Is you get some buddies. Get some drinks. Yeah, yeah. yeah hang out. Get I just nice played at my first charity tournament uh, a couple days ago. Oh, actually. beautiful. Fucking got a sunburn on my forearm. Yeah, it, was like the first, it was like the first sun I got all year. <laughs> yeah. But no, nah, dude, I love golf. And uh, you said meditation. I was thinking about taking that up recently. I actually just got into uh, listening to Mike, Mike Stud, the oh, new Mike. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah. has a podcast and he talks a lot about like, spirituality meditation and shit yeah so i was thinking about kind of like looking into it i've heard it has a lot of benefits me too and you know i've never done it myself either mm-hmm. like meditation of any kind and I actually, I actually i got a friend that lo- like has been on that grind forever right and was like you should always do it i'm like i can't imagine sitting there doing nothing yeah for yeah. 30 minutes in my head sh- chanting like uba duba you know what i mean like <laughs> like i don't know what the fuck it's i'm like supposed it's to it's do like around a campfire with the ouija board and you're like what the fuck am i doing right yeah now? i'm gonna summon a demon or something <laughs> sitting there. i don't know what's gonna happen i've never done it yeah, but dude. from what I understand, it is like supposed to help you and yeah, ground man. you. Or something. I mean, it's just it's you're supposed to see the world differently, and like <laughs> I'm not big into like you know the crystals and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. I do believe like energy pref- like does it, it, it is something. Uh-huh. I've never cared enough to like look into it deeply, but yeah. I think spiritual. I think like the whole uh, meditation is interesting, especially with someone like me who I'm running around doing a million fucking things every yeah, day. Yeah. It might be nice to have ten minutes to just kind of decompress and hopefully rid some fucking anxiety from all the shit that I deal with yeah. every day, but. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I think it's cool, though. I yeah. think it's cool. Actually, there's a part of the 75 hard challenge you're supposed to do after. Okay. It's called, like, the live hard challenge. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> These guys that, are trying to kill how's people. That, how's that sound? <laughs> and it's just, like, a bunch of other dude, additives I can't into believe, it. I can't believe that, dude. It's hard, bro. It's hard. <laughs> I really... That's a lot. I'm in no rush to get it going again, but I <laughs> definitely do want to get it going again. And get what is, like, the sober October that Rogan does? Sober That's, like, October, right, yeah. right before the holidays yeah. to, like, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I thought I was going to have more of an urge for is, like, the drinking, which... But, like, once yeah. you get in a routine, you kind of, like... It's, it's like, I don't miss that feeling anymore. Yeah, the hangover, know? groggy. Like, I love, I love having a few drinks. Don't get me wrong, but... Yeah. I didn't miss the feeling of, like, kind of feeling like shit in the morning, groggy, you know, yeah. like, brain fog. It's so yeah. true. Like, when you're sober, you see that. Yeah. So that was kind of a blessing, too, because now I'm, like, I'm not even itching to drink or do anything now, which is fine. The <laughs> fucking bomb just went off. What the fuck? What, um... <laughs> what the fuck are we doing here? This is why you don't come to East Boston for a podcast. This is why you don't... We gotta clip that right there. <laughs> some dude just got bopped. Some, the music video gone wrong. <laughs> Bong, we're back with another alcohol review, and today we got vodka, five percent alcohol, cool looking product. Let's try it out. Okay, what's your um, your know. drink of choice? <sighs> My drink of choice. So recently, I mean, I, all right. So, kind of cycles like as as I was growing up. So obviously, like high school. I was chasing uh, Fireball with Bud Light. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. made, that, made those poor choices in high school. <laughs> Locked out behind the East Boston hockey rink many times. <laughs> yeah. Crawling home. So I had to be home by 10 o'clock. I got the belt. So yeah. I made sure to get home by 10 o'clock. But I was like yeah. passed out drunk. Um, so Bud Light kind of growing up in high school. And then after that, college, I, uh, I was always a big... Uh, I love OJ. So I was always like a, a tequila OJ guy. Nice, nice. Um, Vodka, like I got into the the, the Smirnoff the Smirnoff stage yeah. in college a little bit, a little cranberry vodka cranberry I like. Sure, yeah. Um, now I'm just like I like I like tequila limes a lot. Yeah, those are good. Uh, tequila lime soda sodas. I still like the or the orange juice and uh, tequila. Sure. Um, I, I got into IPAs too a little bit. Nice. I like beer. I do like beer. Yeah. I'm not a big Bud Light guy anymore. I'll still drink one if it's there, but yeah. like. I like high noons too, honestly. Dude, the high noons, high are, noons nice. are great. But they're expensive, dude. I paid 30 bucks for a 12 pack. My buddy, uh, shout out Evan, Vodkite, uh, <laughs> great fucking drink. They, it tastes like legit Gatorade, but it's made with 
the same stuff High Noon's made with, and it's because nice. it's it makes sense because it's made with premium vodka, mm -hmm. so it's not like malt. Malt's pretty yeah. much like bare almost. Yeah. So that's why Truly and White Claw are so cheap, but like High Noon vodka, like they're all expensive because it's made with high quality. A better shit. type of liquor. Yeah, which yeah. makes sense, but it's still like burning a hole in my fucking pocket. Yeah, yeah. But like on a nice beach day, I would love. I love High Noons. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. For sure. Anything Great dark? Summer. Anything like whiskey rum? Anything? Oh like yeah, I like whiskey too. Like I went to the. Uh, I was actually lucky enough to get invited uh, backstage to Chase Rice's concert. No shit. Yeah, do you know Chase Rice? Yeah, yeah. Some people don't know who he is. I'm like, how the fuck do you not know Chase Rice? I love country music. Yeah, me too. too, yeah. So I met Chase Rice. Uh, he took us on his bus before the concert and no shit. No shit. Because dude. he saw me on TikTok and thought I was yeah. funny. <laughs> no and, like, shit. That's I, awesome. I have some famous people that, like, because I don't really consider myself famous because, yeah. like, I mean, I'm locally known in Boston, but, like, yeah. actual, like, celebrity status. Yeah. And he, uh, he invited me on. They invited me backstage. I went with my girlfriend. We didn't know what to expect. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, like this is cool. Like, let's, let's. You could show up and your name's not on the list. Yeah, you know, like, like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, let, that's. I don't know. I've seen a lot of sketchy shit before, so let's be careful. Yeah. Got there, got our tickets. The tour manager came out. He's actually from around here. Yeah. Took us through the back. We went in. You ever see Goodfellas? Oh yeah. I felt like Ray Liotta when he brought the girl on the first date. Like you know they go yeah. under the fucking under the restaurant and like from behind the kitchen they take some of the seat. Yeah yeah yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I was like oh, this is like this is kind of cool. Cause me and my girl were dating for like three or four months at that point. But uh -huh. still it was like it was so cool. Oh, you must felt like the man too. You oh, like, like new new relationship and you're gonna show her around. I was, like, I was like yeah I'm fucking a list buddy. <laughs> so we got in. We had like a we were behind the stage at the House of Blues. Yeah. We had a room full of just like every alcohol you could think of for free. Oh, and shit. then. Chase was taking pictures with fans before game, uh, before the concert, the yeah. game, and um, I was like, oh, I want to say what's up to him, but like, does he, did he actually see my videos? Like, yeah, now yeah. I'm in my own head. I'm like, did his like tour manager just see my shit? And like, they just like, you know, invited me. Yeah, yeah. So after the pictures were done, I just like, you know, introduced myself. And he was like, he was like, oh, I know who you are. And like, <laughs> he's like, I know who you are. And like, he was just like shooting the shit with me. And he was like, hey, let's just go on my tour bus because. He performed at nine. It was like probably seven thirty at that point. Yeah. He just brought me and my girlfriend on his tour bus with his manager, and we just like took shots of whiskey, and we were just no like shooting shit, the shit, drinking dude. like a whiskey and coke. Yeah. That is so. It cool. was the coolest thing ever, and like, I, like that's the main thing I want people to like feel when they meet me is like I'm a down to earth, like cool person. That's yeah, yeah. the vibe I got from him. Like he was so laid back. Like all he yeah. cared about was just playing his music and chilling. Exactly. But then from chilling on his tour bus, like just shooting the shit with him one on one. Yeah. To seeing him go on in front of like thousands of people and they're screaming at him, like yeah. obsessed. It was so weird. He also threw me up a Bud Light during his concert. <laughs> no. Yeah, way. because we were. It was set up like the VIP area was up here, the stage was here, and the crowd was here. Okay. So he was giving out Bud Lights, and he like threw one up to me during the concert. It was so sick. Dude, that that's, that's like a still, memory, dude. That's still like to date the coolest thing that's ever happened. Like, yeah, because of like memory. your kind of like social media yeah. fame and everything. Yeah, I mean, no, this I, this has opened so many fucking doors. The social yeah. media fame, and that is like like just in general life experience. Like that yeah. is so cool to go backstage and on a bus and then see him perform. Like that's so cool. We'll see what happens, but I've developed a really like I still text his tour manager to this day. So anytime they're in Boston, like he's like, we, we got you. Like anytime you're in, yeah, dude. So I'm crazy. like, dude, I'm always around. To see yeah. you. <laughs> Please let me know. It was such a sick experience, but exactly, especially for the summer, dude. Country's sick. What's the issue? I, I can't even read the fucking menu here, kid. Why couldn't we go to Donkey's down the street? I don't like this place. Cool, sir. I understand you're a poor, uneducated sack of shit who knows nothing about coffee. Never come to Starbucks again. That's gonna be twenty one sixty two. I fucking told you we should have went to Donkey's. Next thing we got for you, and you got the donkeys in hand. Got the donkeys in hand. Uh, are you sponsored by them yet? Because I see yeah. you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No shit. It took a while, but yeah. <laughs> I saw a lot of videos like, yeah. please sponsor me. Why are you not yeah, sponsoring dude, me? Dude, did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, actually, that's a funny story too. Um, I mean, the majority of my the majority of my income is from brand deals and partnerships with companies. Uh huh. So Dunkies was always like, uh, I always wanted a fucking partnership with them because I, I literally drink this every day. Yeah. Like I, I don't like go to, I never go to Starbucks. It's way <laughs> too fucking pricey. Yeah. I drink Dunkin' Donuts every day. So yeah. I never took the business side of TikTok serious until like the last six months. I linked up with an agent and then I have another, another person behind me. So I have a little team around me. Yeah. So once I had the team around me, they started like Not saying, hey, you doors. can make some real money off of this, you know? Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh shit. So when the money started coming in, I'm like, how do I get in touch with Dunkin'? Because I would always just like tag them in my story, DM yeah, them on yeah, Instagram, yeah. but like that's not how you get in touch with Dunkin' Donuts. They're a big corporation, yeah, right? Yeah. So we, uh, my buddy's girlfriend, who also works for me, she has a thing on LinkedIn where she can get corporate emails. Okay. So she found like a few emails for me to like outreach to about myself. So nice. we got like three corporate Dunkin' emails. I reached out to them, no response for two weeks. <laughs> reached out again, no response for another couple weeks. So yeah. I just kind of gave up on it. But then randomly, 
six weeks later, some girl just like hit me back and she was like, hey, Tommy, like, you know, we want to we want to work with you. Like, let's set up yeah. a time to talk. And I was like, OK, cool. Hopped on a Zoom call. Um, the girl that I talked to who's like probably head of their social media. Uh-huh. She actually lives in Southie, oh, which shit. is funny. So she knew who I was. She's yeah. like, we're fans of your stuff. Like, you know, we love it. Like, we That's want cool you to- when, you, when you got somebody that does know you and likes yeah. you, they know how much what, if right. people see you do right. it. Like, if you're nobody in a, a office, not on TikTok mm-hmm. and don't understand, like, people right. will see you drink a Dunkin', yeah. get a taste in their mouth yeah. and go get it. It's so true because I even have people that tag me or DM me all the time and they're like, with their Dunkin'. Yeah, yeah. So it's obviously like they probably weren't, they probably drank Dunkin' before. Before, but it's like I'm doing something that's making these people like say hey I want to go get Duncan and send it to Tommy exactly which is so valuable to brand so absolutely once they saw that um, well they probably were seeing that but she was just like yeah we want to work with you long term like we see you as a great fit and yeah. in my head I'm like why haven't you guys fucking answer me back but, <laughs> I mean I know that's not how it works like if, yeah. if they see me doing shit for free they're not gonna pay me for it sure, you know? yeah. which is fine that's business 101 right yeah. so uh, we developed a short-term deal so I think I'm doing five videos for them right now nice that's that should be finished up at the end of June or middle June. Okay. And then once that's over with, the videos are doing really good right now. So I'm hoping to develop like a long term partnership, like hopefully like a year contract. Dude, that would be huge. I want to see a cardboard cut out of you oh, and bro. Rain Oak I'm Square. Like, I want a Tommy drink. <laughs> you know, yeah. Charlie had the Charlie drink. Yeah, yeah. Like, I want a Tommy drink. <laughs> what would your Tommy drink be? Everyone asks, I've had that question so many fucking times. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, because I just drink a black ice coffee. So but that's your go to is the black ice cold coffee? black, yeah. Or I'll have like almond milk and a few Splenda just because I'm like I don't like to drink my calories yeah, like, yeah. now that I'm trying to like lose weight like sure. I'm like trying to you know be smart with it but yeah. I'd have to do something different you know because <laughs> like why would it why would this sell us a Tommy drink you yeah. gotta think of what people would want to drink but like something that's also kind of entertaining too like that plays into like my character yeah. blue collar so yeah, Italian is maybe it's got to be like something like right, yeah. you know what I mean like it's hard to really like pinpoint that it's got to be you it's got to be it's like it's got to be me and this is this is honestly me maybe like an espresso <laughs> shot in here yeah. like what do the union guys get before a 6 to 2 yeah know? seriously like they get their they want their caffeine so yeah I don't know we could probably spin it but that's like a that would be a sick fucking that would be <laughs> like a worldwide like worldwide that would be like a lifetime accomplishment oh yeah like a drink with Dunkin Donuts oh yeah dude but it would sell out too Oh, I hope so. I mean, that'd be sick. I also think, like, another lifetime goal or, like, a moment where I can sit down and be like, damn, like, I made it. It's Uh like, if I'm ever, do you know, like, how at the Garden, obviously, they have, like, celebrities courtside and they're on the jumbo trial oh, yeah, games like that, if i ever do that which i hope so i hope it happens like that would be like a lifetime accomplishment dude like, that, damn, that, that like, I, made it. I honestly and i don't know anything about this world but i feel like that's completely attainable i saw kevin I cooney was like yeah. right near there he was on like he was courtside he almost. was courtside yeah, pretty much yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i, mean, I think I it's very him. attainable especially because like we were talking about boston so untapped in the social media space yeah and i feel like i've already tapped into it pretty much it's pretty well so yeah. it's like just growing and it, it really comes down to networking and who you know yeah and that's something i've really learned over the last six months is is building a network and making the right connections and because of that like i've had a lot of things line up for me yeah it's been going good so hopefully we get to connect over at the garden and we make it happen pretty (laughs) soon that'd be dope hi i'm robert hoffman i'm a psychology student at boston university today we're taking a deep dive in the minds of real bostonians a dying breed in the city What's up, you fucking yuppie? Your um, YouTube series yep. called Boston Cream, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks, it's like two episodes, or what was it now? Two episodes, two episodes yeah. In. So, how's that going? That's going good. I mean, we, we got it going, I think, a fuck, about a month ago. So, yeah, we wanted to do something like, have you ever seen the Rail Bros of Simi Valley? Yes, yeah. So, you know how they play up on like, where are they from? California? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the stereotypes there? Yeah. We were like, why don't we do something like this, but like for Boston? No, that's I a great feel idea. Like, there's so much there's so much potential you know yeah, if yeah. you do it right and people think it's funny like then you know you could have a real thing here yeah. so i linked up with a few guys from the area some creators yeah. um a couple other people and we put out the first duncan episode that was my favorite one yeah to do. that one was cool that one was funny because my my video guy did a great job editing it yeah and he made it look like a legit commercial in the beginning and then yeah. it kind of just went into like we just played characters you yeah. know like kind of what i'm doing already but just in a long form version which was great yeah and i um, love that chris guy uh, i forgot his last name Monticello, yeah. Monticello. He's awesome, dude. Yeah, he's uh, the nerd kind of the smart yeah, nerd. The yuppie, like that's, the yuppie, yeah, yeah, the yuppie that's in with like so all he, the yeah, so guys. that was like the whole thing, and that's kind of a, a, something I found is a passion of mine too because I enjoy doing it so much. Is like yeah. the long form screenwriting yep. and acting is a lot of fun for me. Yeah, kind of directing too, because uh-huh. um, when I wrote out the screenplay of it, I was like, oh, this is like fun. Like three hours went by, I didn't even realize it because I was having a fun time, like visioning it, writing it down. That's like, awesome. It's awesome. So. 
when I gathered everyone together and I was like, hey, this is what I want to do, like everyone was all in for it. Cause yeah. like, we all realized like there's really no, it, it, everyone that got big in Boston is gone, right? Yeah. Like think of like the big guys, you know, even if you have like, if you even mentioned like the Wahlbergs, the Afflecks, yeah. uh, Matt Damon, fucking Bill Burr, like they're all, they're all very in successful, California. but they're in, they're in LA, right? Yeah. So there's not really anyone here. And like, that's kind of what I want to, where I want to differ myself if I do continue to grow uh -huh. is I want to stay here. You know, I want to have vacation homes in other areas. Oh, for sure. But I definitely want to be in Boston, you know? Yeah. Because the love I get here is like no other place. And it's funny too, because when I went to Vegas for the All-Star game in February, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was even getting recognized there, which is crazy. Oh no shit, that's Yeah, awesome. not to the magnitude of here, but like still like, it was still like five or six Couple people. Tommies, yeah. yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but like, I love Boston and yeah, so the YouTube series is great. We did the Duncan episode, just playing like the comedy series type thing, yeah, keeping yeah. the characters, and then we did one like selling t-shirts outside the guy. I saw that one, yeah. Like that the was... scalpers, but like the t-shirt people. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. When you're roughing up Chris in that episode, oh, and you're like- grabbed him by the neck. You're like, I don't know why this guy's here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he's gonna be around. And then he goes off to the side as like a yeah. private interview. I know, And he's like, I well, know. I told him I was gonna be here. So, so. Cause that's how we <laughs> wanted funny. to set it up. Like kind of like, uh, I don't know how to just like, kind of like the office almost like yeah. where they have like the off-camera interviews reacting to what happened Yes, that's the style we wanted to go for and like no, the first two episodes went great, but YouTube's just a different animal man like yeah. in terms of views like on TikTok I'm used to getting hundreds of thousands millions of views yeah. even Instagram like my Instagram's growing a lot too But YouTube it's so hard to gain traction. So yeah. we're gonna continue it. I think the main thing is just staying consistent Yeah, um, definitely I'm gonna look to get the next episode out probably within the next week or two. Cool. So, um, what other skits are you are, are gonna do people for the, expect for the Boston yeah. Cream or just in general? For Boston Cream or maybe like future general, bigger topics. What do you like? Where do you see the, the platform going? So yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the, where I'm at right now is I'm trying to dip my toes in a bunch of different waters and kind of get involved in a little bit of everything. Sure. So I told you off camera, I'm currently in the works of side of my own podcast. Yep. Um, I'll keep that a little under wraps, but podcast coming soon. Awesome. Uh, the YouTube, obviously, I want to keep hammering that. I think I want to do more like vlog styles and man of the street stuff. Nice. Uh, along with the Boston Cream. So like, you know, a little bit of both on the YouTube. Yep. And I'm doing a Snapchat show, actually. That no kind way. of fell into my lap. Yeah. Have you ever been on like the, do you have Snapchat? Yeah, yeah. Like a I've lot of people don't have Snapchat No, anymore. I've seen that, the, like the Discovery right discovery, under the stories. Yeah, so it's called the Deets and it's basically like a, uh, it's like it's like uh, fun facts or not fun facts, but it's like. Have you ever seen Drunk History? Yeah, I love Drunk History. So it's kind of like that because, like for an example, we did like the history of Hooters. Okay. But it's a lot of clickbaity shit. I'll be real with you. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot of like you know, girls and <laughs> looking and, yeah, and an outfit yeah, and outfits that guys are gonna click on. Yeah, but yeah. It's not just that. Like we did Hooters. We did like um. We did like mafia people. Okay, cool. We did uh, like a little bit of everything, but it's just like, it's like potty facts, yeah. but like with the history spin on it. So it's like viral videos, uh -huh. but it's also has history behind what the backstory is. That's if that cool. makes sense. Not only is that sound interesting, but that'll get you a lot of like- It's a different in avenue, front of a lot right? Of it's a different avenue. And that's what I didn't realize with Snapchat is how many people are actually on the app. Yeah. Like when I, one of the videos, uh, actually a few of the episodes went viral and like, I was seeing like 50, 60 million viewers. And I was like, holy shit. Like there's that many people on fucking Snapchat. Yeah, yeah. Like eventually down the line, I want to be just like a personality, you yeah. know, like, yeah. I mean, it's hard to say like when people are like, what do you do for work? Or, like, what, what is, what do you do? Like, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I make videos on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I'm the TikTok guy. Yeah. I'm also in the process of, um, I don't know how I forgot about this, of uh, starting up a talent agency in Boston. Nice. So that's like big, that's that's a long-term play. Yeah. Um, my agent, Nick and me, and our, our other partner, Kat, kind of came up with this idea of starting up a talent agency that's also like a collaborative group just based in Boston starting nice. off. Yeah. Um, Cause I had thought about it and like, there's not, there's a lot of creators in Boston, but there's nothing that's like kind of bigger. Enough is, it's like, it's like a bar stool. It's like an umbrella yeah, corporation with right. a lot of different media outlets. So that was like the main, that was like the first thing I thought of when starting. I was like, why aren't there any like big groups around here? I feel like everyone's yeah. kind of like every man for themselves around here. And I don't like yeah. that. I, I like working in teams. Definitely. So I was like, I have a good team around me. I know some good agents, like why not do some management, but also give 
give a network to people because yeah. that's the most valuable thing is is get, is having a network and i feel like a lot of these creators are just doing it for fun where they can actually be making a lot of money yeah if they just collab with people and put themselves out there more yeah for sure so i was like let's make a group let's make an umbrella it's going to be called the pinnacle talent agency nice um and that umbrella is just what they're under it's like a full send or a bar stool and eventually down the line i'd love to have like you said multiple personalities doing content for us yeah podcasting youtube stuff whatever so yeah well you got my number <laughs> hey, I got you, bro. Hey, listen, this is a good start, bro. This is yeah. a good start. But that's like that's the main thing I found with uh, having a career in the social media space is networking and connecting with people. Oh, so for sure. I've got to meet some good people, and I've learned a lot of lessons along the way. But I think I'm like a year and a half in now, and it's like I feel like I'm in a really good spot, now, yeah. which is great. But that's a long term play. But something to everyone to keep their eyes out for. We're gonna be launching it officially on social media within the next month. Next month. Yeah, within the next month. Yeah. Awesome, man. That It'll is be great. great. It's gonna be awesome. That's great. That's all we got for you. So I, I wanted to thank I you for your time. I, I know you're a busy it, guy. And I appreciate and, it. And this was great. It's a lot of fun talking to you and getting to meet you. <laughs> thank you, man. And trips to the record, I canceled on him last week because <laughs> I was so unorganized. So I want to apologize for that officially no. on the record. <laughs> no, um, fine. Like I said, dude, the main thing I want to get across to people is. The Tom that you see on TikTok is not my real personality. Yeah. I'm just playing a character, even though a lot of people like that. Yeah. I still have that kind of attitude, but I just want people to say like, hey, like he's a good guy. You yeah. know, like he's actually a down earth person. He's humble. Yeah. And as long as I get that across, that's all I care about. So I appreciate you having me on where I can display that. Exactly. It was great to see, like, and mm -hmm. also hear some stories about what the, all the fame yeah. has brought you. Yeah. And also to, like you said, see your, your real side. It's, it's really cool. I love to share that with people because I, I get those questions all the time on social media where I'm like, there's so many different things I can talk about. So whenever I have a chance to like get more exposure or talk to people about it, I'll yeah. always do it. So hey. I appreciate you reaching out to me. Of course, man. I'm glad we did it and that's it. Thank you, man. I All appreciate right. it. Have a good one. See you guys later. I've been in instances where in classroom, in a classroom participation, I raise my hand and say, uh, two plus one's three. Then by the classroom, three, ha, ha.